Hey up, you beautiful buggers, it's TNG. Welcome to this week's top five camps. Now, the first half of this video is going to be the best clean camps of the week, and the second half is going to be the best immersive builds of the week. And of course, guys, at the end of the video, we're going to have the honourable mentions too, so make sure you stick around. Anyhow, with all that being said, let's get into it. In the number 5 spot for the clean camps, we have Lady H with the container build. Now, I actually saw this on one of the few camp building pages that I'm not banned from on, on Facebook. Yeah, I don't have the best of reputations on there. Well, I don't on here either. Anyhow, we move. So, like I said, yeah, this is based on a picture that was posted on Facebook. I don't have it to hand, but let me tell you, this is pretty damn close to it. It's a really nice looking structure, this. I love what you've done with containers. I think they're a really underutilized piece of kit. Um, you do see some people using them, but they're not the most common of building items. I'm not calling them a prefab because they bloody well ain't. You can do so much stuff with them. You can make crane builds with them. You can do what Lady H has done here. Yeah, the dead versatile. All right, exterior-wise, Lady H, really awesome looking camp. Now, onto your interior. Mm-hmm, yep, simply, simply lovely. I love what you've done with them kitchen counters. Clever as shit idea, that. And I must say, that bathroom's pretty sick as well. I like the bubbles. I've seen you do that before. It's a cool touch. Um, very unique use of the bowling balls. Yep, good work, Lady H. Thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on number five spot. Coming in at number four, we have another new entrant to the competition. Nice to see more new faces. It's Shanugin with the Charleston Mid-Century Bungalow. Shanugin, this build is fucking stunning, to put it quite simply. Um, the exterior, I cannot fault it one bit. That looks awesome. Your proper typical modern style, but it still stands out. Oh, in fact, actually, I have found one thing that's triggering me uh, OCD. I, I always do. The chimney breast is off center. <laughs> it's probably intentional and it it's not an issue. I'm just, I'm just being a bastard. I apologize. All right, seriously, the outside of this thing is beautiful. Um, it's not actually too much of a complicated shape, though, guys. It just goes to show that simplicity is sometimes better, I guess. Yeah, in this case, it definitely is. Okay, then, so let's take a look at the interior and much like the outside. Beautifully well decorated, especially your kitchen area. And actually, I will point out that little shed where you've got all your crafting benches, that's really well done as well. And trust me, the red barn walls, there isn't anything wrong with them. It looks like a shed, yeah? So it works. Shanugin, thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number four spot. Any other week, this would have been higher. It was just a bloody difficult one. In the number three spot, and this feels wrong putting this at number three, but it just goes to show the level of builds we've had submitted. Trust me, they're going to get a bit mad. This is the Four Spires Camp by Paiu, or Greengrass 28G. And as well as being an absolutely beautiful build, it's dedicated to Lady Devan. Now, for the few of you who don't know who Lady Devan is, she was a community manager for Bethesda. And unfortunately, a couple of weeks ago, she got laid off from the company, which is a bloody shame because she did a lot for the camp building community and she did a lot for me in terms of YouTube as well. So yeah, it is sad to see her go. Now then, back to Paiu's camp and this guy is a master of using the Wavy Willard set. I mean, look at that, guys. It looks like some out of fucking... I, d I don't even know. Um, fairy tales and dragons and shit. Y you know what I'm saying, don't you? It is beautifully well put together, and I, I don't even need to say it, do I? It's complicated as hell. How Paiu manages to get everything so straight, so neat, I'll never know. Uh, I will never know. Now, six structure aside, there's not actually too much going on in terms of an interior, because it's four spires, but he's done a nice job at this here. Like I say, it's a tribute to Devan, and I think it gets the message across perfectly. It's, it's really simple, but beautifully done. Paiu, thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number three spot. And Lady Devan, if by some chance you are watching this, thank you very much for everything you've done for the community and for myself personally. It's much appreciated. Right, so in the number two spot, we have an incredible looking camp, and I was torn between this and the next build for number one, so I actually went off bolts in Discord this time round. Guys, I never usually do that, but this time, yeah, I did use it to kind of influence my decision a little bit. 
This beautiful looking structure is by Alex P and it's the luxurious hunting lodge. Oh, very fancy. So obviously the most standy out part of this, that isn't even a frigging word, is it? But you, you get what I'm saying. The most eye-catching part of this is the actual build itself. That is gorgeous, Alex. I like what you've done with that double pointy boy 12,000 at the front there. Still not sure how you've managed to get two different sizes. It is playing with me head a little bit that I, I'm positive that there's a way, of, obviously there is a way of doing it because you've done it, but it is confusing me and I don't know why. Silver Bunny, let me know down in comments if that is what you did with your schoolhouse roof. I, I think it is. Either way, right, it looks bloody awesome. Now then, I'm also a massive fan of how you put glass in the shack set there. I do believe that's a shack set. I think I can see shutters. That's a nice touch. And guys, it's a little bit of building wizardry. It's also something you may not notice the first time you look at it. I don't know. That's the kind of things I miss because I'm blind as shit most of the time. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a nice little torch. All right, gorgeous job with the outside of this. Oh, and of course, I forgot to mention the overhanging roofs. I mean, if I've not got underpinnings to talk about, I I've got to mention them at least, haven't I? So, on to the interior. And again, stunning. I've got no other words for it. What a beautiful looking camp this is honestly alex you've outdone yourself with this it's clean looking but it still has that country shack cabin kind of feel to it i don't know how you've pulled it off but it works uh, and guys i'm looking at it now and i'm seeing more and more building techniques this is so well put together alex thank you very much for entering this week like i said it weren't an easy choice to put this in number two spot congratulations though hats off to you mate and with that, we come to the number one spot of the queen category. And I know what you're all thinking. TNG, what could possibly beat that last camp? Well, I'm going to show you now. This week's winner is Nuka-Cola Man with the Hobbit Hole build. What a unique body build this is. Now, yes, I have seen another Hobbit Shire build before. I can't remember who did it. Some random guy on Facebook. It was ages ago now. However, that is literally the only other one I've seen. This is fantastic, Nuka Cola Man. It must have taken you forever. Those Wavy Willards boulders are a bastard to work with. Trust me, I would have done a tailor made wasteland and threw my controller out at window. That would just frustrate the shit out of me. Anyhow, it's a proper cool concept, this Nuka Cola Man. It looks like an Hobbit Hole. Well, as much as you possibly can make something look like an orbit all in 76 it's hard enough building a decent looking structure using normal components let alone wavy willards boulders so before we go any further and take a look at the inside let's address the elephant in the room is this actually a clean build because it does look you know rather immersive and naturistic again not a fucking word do i care no well to answer the argument i've just made with myself Yes, it does look immersive, but there's no hobbits in Appalachia. In fact, hobbits don't exist, believe it or not. They are, in fact, mythical. Now, yes, there are small people in the world, but they are not hobbits. And it would be very rude of you to call them hobbits, so please don't do that, right? You'll open up an old can of worms. Now, I said the same thing last week about Vikings in Appalachia. Uh, maybe they could have been. Yeah, they did get everywhere, you know, looting and pillaging and whatever other fun shit they got up to. But you can't tell me there was pissing hobbits. I'm not having it. Hobbits aren't a thing. So yeah, after that totally pointless tangent, this is a clean build. Argue with me in the comments if you want, but I am correct. End of. Okay then, so with all that nonsense being said, let's take a look inside the hole. And wow, extremely well decorated. Beautifully well decorated, in fact. Obviously, there isn't too much room in here because it's designed for... A, a hobbit um but it's very well filled up it looks cozy it looks livable all right 10 out of 10 from me nuka cola man amazing build very very clever indeed thank you very much for entering this week congratulations on the number one spot more than well deserved my friend and that wraps up the best clean builds of the week let's move on to the best immersive builds of the week Coming in at number five, we have Silver Bonnet with the Kinetic Dwelling. Ooh, a very intriguing name and beautiful lighting. First thing I noticed, the lighting. Bunny, you were amazing at that. Please never stop doing it. Even though it does, you know, take away from the scrappiness a little bit. I don't give a shit, though. It's awesome. 
Now, I do believe this is a pre-existing location that you've kind of tarted up a little bit, you know, put lipstick on a pig. And again, you've done a great job with it. Guys, I said this 86,000 times, maybe 86,001 times. Pre-existing locations, they're not easy to build in. Hard to place shit down, clipping issues, blah, 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 etc, etc. I don't have to repeat myself. Go back and watch the other 12,000 videos that I've done where I go on about that. So while Buddy's done a great job at renovating this pre-existing shit, it's the decor that makes this build. And of course, the lighting. You know, I'm a bit of a moth. Lamp lovers and all of that. No, that's a totally different thing. Yeah, your decor bunny absolutely killing it yet again ladies and gents i can't stress to you how important decoration is especially on scrappy and war friendly shit now yeah you can go too far with it you can take away the war friendliness but this is another subject i've covered a vast amount of times and you don't want to hear my voice for any longer than you have to do Trust me, I hate hearing myself as well. It's totally understandable. Bunny, thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number five spot. Right, in the number four spot, we have Chez79 with the immersive Robco weapons and robotics supplier. That was a mouthful. That's what she said. No, I have never had that said to me. There, it's out the way. Done. Right then, so full clarity, this was very close to being swapped out with another build that's going to get featured at some point in this video, which is very similar. Cryptic, I know, but wait and see. What I loved about Shez's build though, and the other one to be fair, is how realistic it is. This looks like something you'd find in the wasteland, but not in the same way as a build you'd find in the wasteland that's been made by a settler who has gaffer tape and a couple of cable ties. Sorry, zip ties for my American friends. No, mon petit fleurs. This is more of a building that was built pre-war and that has just been left to rot. You know, like 99.9% .9 of all the structures in Fallout 76. Another thing I found interesting about this is your location. I didn't know you could build this close to Rob because that sign is definitely not an in-game item saying that i could be lying to you you know i'm not the kind of guy that researches what's coming into the game or pays too much attention to what's actually come out in the game i'll leave that to the to the big boys all i know is right this is one realistic looking camp and shez is a master at, um actually doing these kind of builds seriously everyone she does she knocks it out the buddy park all right exterior wise very convincing very realistic and immersive in its own way so onto the interior and to me it looks like your typical offices apart from when you get into like research areas like this here where shez has actually gone all out with the decor mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen this is quite a girthy and chonky build so i wasn't expecting this place to be filled to the brim because the budget would be an issue um if you filled every single room with shit now in all honesty it matches in with theme brilliantly and overall shares you have done a cracking job with this thank you very much for entering this week congratulations on the number four spot Coming in at number three, we have Twisted Rose with the Organized Chaos build. This is a stunning looking camp, Twisted. Um, I'm not a fan of the Elvisha set, full clarity with you. And you know what, truth be told, if it was just the Elvisha set, I wouldn't have put it in the top five. But the way you've put the Pagoda set, or Pavilion, whatever the bloody hell it's called, I don't know over the top of the Elvisha shit, it really does make a difference. It's a really clever addition, and it makes the world a difference. Believe me when I say that. Top-notch work on, um, on the actual building itself. It's quite simple, other than that, you know, double walling, but it, it works. It works really nicely. I'm pleasantly surprised. Another thing I will point out as well before we go inside is the pavilion set being used to make that little garagey terrace kind of area you've got there um the pavilion set doesn't actually come with pointed slopey boys on it so the way you've put them on top of there and how well it matches in yeah 10 out of 10 from me so onto your interior and it matches the outside perfectly it's quite shabby i won't say it's scruffy i'd say it's um well worn well used aye that that's the best terminology for it it looks like an house that's been abandoned after the war and whatever's in it has just been, you know, neglected a little bit. I mean, of course it would be. You're not going to be hoovering up after a bloody nuclear bombs fell, have you? Well, I don't know if you had a Mr. Andy. Twisted, stellar job with this one. Thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the numero tres spot. Okay then, so coming in at number two, we have Acid Rain with... It doesn't have a name. 
Um, Acid Rain's camp. Yeah, I'm um, I'm properly creative. Now, if you don't remember Acid Rain, guys, they are the one that built that fantastic crane on top of Charleston. Uh, it was a fair few episodes ago now, but it was sick. Trust me. This one isn't quite as grandiose, I think the word is, but it's very cool in its own right. I love how you've used the stairs as roof pieces. Um what was it roadkill did the same last week with his viking longhouse and i think it looks awesome especially with that particular stair set what is it again the abandoned mine stairs i do believe yeah i think it is but either way it looks really sweet uh totally transforms the build no i can't believe i'm saying this again but fantastic use of a prefab this time it's the bolt. Uh, that was actually a really good addition to the game. I do like that. Anything vehicle related, I'm a fan of. Aye, exterior wise, you've nailed it. No complaints from me. It looks immersive. Definitely war friendly. Fits in with Fallout perfectly. The interior. Now then, the decor on this. Oh, outstanding you can tell you've put a lot of time and a lot of thought into how you've actually laid things out in here and it looks spot on honestly again no complaints from me can't find a fault with it stunning work acid rain thank you very much for entering this week congratulations on the number two spot right then so now we come to the number one spot of the immersive section and i've gone with something a little bit different this week Ladies and gentlemen, this week's winner and only on their second entry to the competition is Courier 6 with the Devil's Reject Ranch House. Let me make this clear though, right? I have never seen Devil's Rejects. I don't have a bloody clue what it is, but I typed it in Google because, you know, we've got the power of internet these days. That's why we're all thick as fuck with no brain cells or survival skills whatsoever. And believe it or not, Courier 6 has done a really good job replicating it. Now, I can respect somebody who manages to make something look like something from a film, game, or anything not in Fallout. To be brutally honest, I respect anybody who can make something that looks like something in Fallout because the building system is so janky, as we all know. Courier, you've done an awesome job of replicating that. Not sure what the film is, like I say, but yeah. <laughs> well done, mate. Now, movie replica aside, even if this was just a totally standalone camp, it looks incredible. It definitely captures law friendly. It looks like a dilapidated pre-war house. I mean... That thing looks shagged. It looks absolutely screwed. It's riddled with more holes than the corpses of Bonnie and Clyde. Um, and it's not just the building either. The decor that you've put down. There's just the right amount of it. And it's perfectly well placed too. Yep, Courier, the exterior of this thing. Hit the nail on the head, my friend. Knocked it for six or any other tng isms you can think of so onto your interior again perfectly decorated to match the theme you've done a really good job on it pal i'm seeing some cool little building techniques much like the outside it looks like utter dog shit which is what we're aiming for in um law friendly builds yeah um really really sweet camp this congratulations on the number one spot my friend more than well deserved and thank you very much for entering this week and that guys wraps up the top five camps but now we've got to take a look at this week's honorable mentions yes and trust me when i say all of these could have ranked in the top five on a normal week but it was very very difficult this time around some of the builds i've had to cut is just <laughs> It's, it's diabolical, really. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, then. So we'll start off with the clean honourable mentions. And now that I'm looking back at this, ah, I should have put this in top five, I think. It's Bonnet with the Little Italy build. Bonnet, this thing is absolutely awesome. I like the neon signs. Um, I'm not usually a massive fan of them, but them, along with the lighting, it looks bloody spot on. The structure and the billboard, not really my cup of tea. Doesn't look bad, don't get me wrong. I just would have, you know, probably got rid of the billboard and just had it a bit more simple. But it's not my camp. It's your camp and it still looks incredible, trust me. So interior-wise, one of the most convincing bars that I've ever seen. Really well put together. It is still very clean, but there's also elements of immersion in there as well. It's a bit of a mad mixture, this one, but it works perfectly. Thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the honourable mention. For our second Queen Honourable Mention, we have Bella Boo with the Happy Hour Pub. Again, another build that any other week would have placed in the top five. 
First off, great choice on the camp location. You can't get much better for this kind of build. It's a really solid spot. And even though you've decorated this pub so well, it still kind of blends in with the area in general. Nice. So your structure, nothing too complicated, guys. It can be a little bit tricky building here. But overall, it is, again, the decor that makes this. But you don't actually have to go too mental in this location. Believe me, just give it a shot. Onto your interior. And it matches the outside. It is very clean indeed it's not really much like a british pub because there'd be piss and vomit all up the walls and several lines of cocaine pre-made up on the tables but we're not going for immersion are we <laughs> we're going for a clean build bella boo thank you very much for entering this week congratulations on the honorable mention okay then so for the first of our two immersive honorable mentions we have a new entrance of competition it's cheeky mittens with the cliffside cabin this one I bounced around between honourables and the top five a number of times. Really difficult one to place, but definitely any other week this would have been in the actual top five. It's a really cool camp mittens. I love the exterior. All the different building materials you've used and the decor that you put down, it makes for a really scrappy and war friendly build. Your interior though is what really caught my eye on this. It is so well decorated. I love the little kitcheny crafting area you've got there. Uh, and just in general, mate, you've done a fantastic job with the decor. Thank you very much for entering this week. What an incredible first entry. You've done a cracking job with it. Thank you very much again, pal. Okay, then. So for our fourth and final honourable mention, this is the one that I said was very similar to Chez's and another one that I bounced around from the top five to the honourable mention. This build, ladies and gents, is the Abandoned Power Station by Still Game. Exterior wise, I have never seen a camp being built using this kit before. In truth, the last thing I would have expected it to be used on is a power station, but it works bloody well. I mean, just look at it, guys. I'm not an expert on what power stations look like, let alone futuristic power stations but it definitely does have an industrial feel about it i love the outside of this thing and it's a very clever idea pal onto your interior and as you can expect it's an abandoned power station so it's going to be full of power related shit isn't it and that's exactly what still's done we have generators for days. That's enough to power a small city or 18,000 water purifiers. Again, much like Chez's build, a very well-decorated camp to suit the theme. It's not over the top, and it's pretty much what you'd expect to see in an abandoned building. It's not going to be filled with a lot of stuff, is it? Especially if the pikeys come in and steal all the copper out of it. Still game, thank you very much for entering. Congratulations on the honourable mention. Brilliant build. And that wraps it up, ladies and gents. Like I said, it was not an easy week. There was a lot of entries that should have been in the top five, but I had to cut them because the quality was so high. If you didn't make it in this week, guys, and you're feeling a bit spicy, please feel free to resubmit next week. There were loads of people. Only sigh. Batandra. A couple of new entries as well. Um, Kif D. We had Aggressive Albino. There was loads that could have made it. And that's that's just mentioning a few. Guys, thank you all so much for entering. I really do appreciate it. As ever, I want to say a massive thank you to all my channel members and Patreons. The extra support is much appreciated. If that's anything that you guys watching are interested in, there's a link in the description as well as links to all my other socials as well. Anyhow, as we say it north, I will love you and leave you. And I'll catch you in the next one. Have fun, everybody.